Hello, this is Shadow of the Moon, and today I'm going to be continuing our Halloween Spooky Deck Profile themed month with my wife's Red Dragon Archfiend deck. Now, this is her favorite deck uh, next to her Burning Abyss. This is a deck that's really close to her and everything because she has a lot of a lot of the symbolism behind it and everything is very, very special to her. And this is her favorite deck because Jack Atlas was one of her favorite characters from 5Ds. And generally, this is just an insane deck. This is a crazy deck because of this guy right here, Red Supernova Dragon. Any time that your opponent activates a monster effect or whatever, you can basically banish everything on the on the entire field. And whether you can get, you'll be able to get your red, your Supernova Dragon back at uh, the end phase. Your opponent will not be able to get any of their stuff back, and it just completely board wipes everything and just banishes everything, really screwing over your opponent. It's really really fast. Um, I think that. It, it has had great support um, maybe eventually I would love we would love to see a link monster of it or I would actually love to see maybe a little bit more support and everything but all in all it's a very very good deck and it's an amazing deck and this is going to be player preference uh, first off she does have two foolish burials in here so but I'm not like I said in my other videos with her deck profiles this is her choice um, I'm not going to discourage her on that because it's obviously she doesn't play tournaments and everything and we just played and back and forth we just have fun we casually play with each other and stuff you know so it's not really that big of a deal. And everything in this deck is going to be player preference. You do not have to run anything else in this deck if you don't want to. If you see something that you may not like, you know, please refrain from commenting on it. Or please refrain from, you know, any negative or nasty votes or anything like that. Because this is just her preference. This is what she likes. All right. So finally, without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight on into it. So first, we're going to have three copies of Crimson Resignator, the best resonator in this deck by far if you control no monsters you can special summon this card from your hand and if any other monster in your control is exactly one dark dragon synchro monster you can special summon up to two resonators from your hand or deck except him you can only activate this effect once per turn and you can't special summon anything from the extra deck except dark dragon synchro monsters which is perfectly fine because everything in this deck minus like the uh, berserker of the ten is going to be a dark dragon synchro monster and this is insane to be able to bring in Special Summon Resonators to be able to Synchro Climb. Because this deck is all about adding Resonators as your hand, Special Summoning from the Graveyard, and essentially Synchro Climbing your way up to Red Supernova Dragon. Okay, and then the next we're going to have is three copies of Red Resonator. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon a level 4 or lower monster from your hand. When this card is special summoned, you can target one face-up monster on the field. It gain life points equal to its attack, which meaning if you have a 3,000 or 3,500 monster, you can increase your life points by 3,500, which is just really, really cool to be able to have life gain in this deck. I, you wouldn't expect a Red Dragon Archfiend to have a little bit of life gain support and everything, but it does. This is really, really a good card. That's why she runs three of them, because... It just really works out, and she, it's just constantly gaining life points. Being able to get like 15,000 life points or whatever is just insane. Okay, then you've got two copies of Synchron Resignator. If a Synchro monster on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand, and you can only special summon it once per turn this way. If this card is sent to the field of the graveyard, you can tar target a Resignator monster in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. So this will add your Resignator monsters back to your hand with ease to be able to keep going into your plays. And then lastly for this uh, re Resignators, we've only got one Chain Resignator. This isn't as good as the other ones, but it's still in here because it is valuable or viable. When this card is normal summoned, while a Synchro Monster on the field, you can Special Summon a Resonator Monster from your deck. So he will allow you to Special Summon your Red Resonator, or it will allow you to Special Summon what you really want to go for, your Crimson Resonator, which is really going to help with your plays. So that's it for the Resonators. Let's move on to the actual monsters. So, three copies of Red Warg. This is actually an essentially a very good card, very underutilized card, because if you have a Resonator monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, but its attack becomes half, but the main reason is because of its level. It's a level 6, meaning if you've got your level 2 Resonators, you can go into your Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend, and then being able to Synchro Climb, because obviously you're going to normal summon a Resonator the same turn because of the way the deck works and everything. I mean, it's really an underutilized card, and it is very, very good because it's consistent to be able to synchro climb and use that to synchro climb. 
Okay, then three copies of your Wandering King Wild win. This guy is really, really good. If you control a fiend type monster with 1500 or less attack, you can special summon this card from your hand, which is pretty much everything in this deck. If you attempt this, you cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck except synchro monsters. During the main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard to add a fiend type with a tuner with 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand. So the next turn, not the same turn that you use it, but the next turn you can banish this to add a tuner monster from your deck to your hand, but this is another good way to special summon and being able to synchro climb because he can essentially special summon himself from the hand. He's a level four, which goes into everything in the stack. And then two copies of Red Sprinter. This guy is really, really good too because if this card is an almost special summon, well, you control no monsters, you can special summon a level three or lower fiend type tuner monster from your hand or from your graveyard. So being able to special summon from your graveyard, really, really useful, very, very viable, very good because you're gonna be synchro climbing and everything. So he allows you to special summon from the graveyard to be able to keep continuing with your plays. This guy is actually very, very um, underutilized too. Very, very underutilized too. You've got your three copies of Magical King Moonstar and I know the glare is just, I actually kind of like the version of this card because of how nice it looks and I love like the borders and everything. Basically he, when he is uh, used as synchro material, but the synchro summon cannot be used as a synchro material except for a synchro monster. If you control a tuner monster, you can special summon this from your hand and what he can do is he can modify its level and change its level based off a of monster on the field that you have. So instead of a level three, if you have a level two, if you needed to make him a level two, you could do that. If you needed to make him a level six, you could do that um, and that's what makes him very, very good in the stack because he can change his level based off of a monster on the field and being able to synchro and go into your plays much, much easier. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's move on to the spells and the traps. So obviously, you're running a Red or Dragon Archfiend. You gotta have your Resonator calls. This is essential, this is important. This is gonna be your searcher of the deck because you add, it lets you add a Resonator from your deck to your hand. And this is not once per turn, meaning if you draw two or even three of these, you can add three of those Resonators. This will really, really help you with gas and really help you with your fuel to be able to just synchro climb. Then two Resonator Destructions. Every single time that you Synchro Summon for a uh, Red Dragon Archfiend monster, you can, um, or every time a Resonator is sent to the graveyard as a Synchro material, you can pop a card on the field. This does get destroyed at the second phase of the turn after you activate it, but this is just essentially gonna really, really help you because this is a really good way because you're Synchro Climbing like crazy in this deck, being able to get like four different Synchros, four or five different Synchros out in one turn as you're climbing. So this will allow you to keep popping cards on your opponent's side of the field. Then two copies of Resonator Command. Resonator Command. Discard a Resonator monster. Add a level four lower fiend type monster from your deck to your hand. So this is gonna allow you to discard a fiend type tuner monster to be able to add those monsters like Wandering King Wildwind, Moonstar, and everything else to your hand to be able to just keep going up and up and up. And then the card that just recently came out not too long ago, which is really great for synchro decks in my opinion, Burning Soul. This was, honestly, I think, was made for a Red Dragon Archfiend deck. You can put this in a Stardust Dragon deck, but I think based off the artwork and just based off of it being called Burning Soul and everything, I think this was essentially made for a Red Dragon Archfiend deck. If you control a level 8 or higher Synchro Monster, you can add one card from your graveyard to your hand, accept that, then immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon, using monsters you control as material for the rest of the turn after this card's activation, your opponent cannot target Synchro Monsters on the field with card effects. That is insane. They can't target the card with artifacts, uh, car, with card effects, meaning your your Archfiend monsters become invulnerable to pretty much anything unless they want to use Super Poly or something, but they can't target them with card effects. This is why I love this card. You can out it out to three if you want. I just she wanted to put two in here just to be able to have some of the other stuff in the deck, but honestly, this is such an amazing card. And then your two copies of MST. You can replace these with whatever you want. If you wanted... Um, Twin Twisters, you wanted uh, Harpy's Feather, Harpy's Feather Duster, if you wanted Lightning Storm or whatever, that's completely up to you, that's your choice. Uh, she just was running the two MSTs because they're still very, very useful. And then like I said before, two Foolish Burials, this is going to allow you to dump your Tuner Monsters into the graveyard or dump Wandering King Wildwind or whatever have you that you need. And like I said, I don't really care that she's running two in here because it's not like, it's not a cheap card or anything, so I don't really think it's that big of a deal. 
and then one copy of Raigeki to be able to pop all monsters on your opponent's side of the field. So that's it for the spells. Let's move on to the traps. So now we have the King's Consciousness, consciousness or Conscience. When your opponent act, declares a direct attack, negate the attack, and then then you can banish one tuner monster from and any number of non-tuner monsters from your special from your graveyard to total level e equal to eight or less. And if you do special summon from your extra deck a synchro monster, this is going to allow you to negate your opponent's attack and being able to synchro to get Red Dragon, Archfiend, or Scarlet, or whatever, or Red Rising, directly from your graveyard, which is crazy. This is a really good way to synchro in from the graveyard, and this is very, very, very just powerful. Then one copy of your syn one copy of Synchro Call. Target a monster in your graveyard and special summon it, but it, its effects are negated. If you do, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro Summon a Dark Dragon or Fiend-type Synchro Monster using only monsters you control as materials. Which is great because you're able to actually you're able to synchro special summon your synchro monster from the graveyard and then dark you can synchro dragon dark dragon or fiend type monster with only monster you control as material so it's another good way to being able to synchro from the graveyard and then king synchro when your opponent declares an attack essentially this is another king's conscience negate the attack and you can apply after it you can banish that synchro monster you control and add a tuner from your graveyard and if you do special summon from your extra deck a synchro monster whose level equals the total levels of the banished monsters and this is treated as a synchro summon this is a great way to synchro from the graveyard so if you're already going into your plays and stuff and you want to be able to synchro from the graveyard that card and king's consciousness are the best way to go one copy of reject reborn when your opponent declares an attack and the battle phase it's basically like a battle fader and then you can special summon a tuner monster and one synchro monster from your graveyard, but their effects are negated. Meaning you can keep going in your plays that negates the effects, but that's perfectly fine because you're basically using a threat or a battle fader, you're ending the battle phase for it. And then lastly for the traps, red carpet. If a dragon type synchro monster is on the field, target up to two resonators in your graveyard and special summon them. This is going to allow you to get your resonators back onto the field. Alright, so that's it for the main deck. Let's move on to the extra deck. So first, we've got the big bad boy himself, the new, it's, he's only been out about a six months or so, Red Supernova Dragon. This guy, as soon as your opponent activates a monster effect, you can banish every single card on the field, including him, but at the end phase, he will come back. So you wait until your opponent has like this ridiculous setup and wait to the right moment, banish everything that they have, they're not getting it back, and then he will come back. Which is just insane. It's just crazy to see that. I've lost to this card because I've gotten cocky and I've sp swarmed the field and then right at the right time she'll play it on her turn and then when it's my turn she'll play it like as soon as like I start getting too much of a board and it just completely shuts down my strategy. Right? And then we've got Red Nova Dragon, the lower one of it, but still just as good. This card gains 500 attack for each tuner monster in your graveyard and cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target the attacking monster, banish this card, and if you do, negate the attack. So it's essentially a Stardust Dragon, except it gets pumped up for every single tuner monster that's in the graveyard. Okay, and then one copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity. This guy is just nuts. This card is Synchro Summon. You can activate the effect for the rest of the turn. Your opponent cannot activate cards. Also, cards your opponent controls cannot activate their effects. Your opponents cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effects activation. That is, that completely shuts down everything that your opponent does because as soon as it synchro summon, they can't activate effects at all. And it's just crazy. Plus, he's 4,000, so even with like Red Eyes Dragoon, he's still going to be able to overpower Red Eyes Dragoon because he's a 4K even with it powering itself up. And then we've got two copies of Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend. You can activate one of these effects once per turn. Either A, you can during your main phase, you can destroy all other cards on the field. Also for the rest of the turn, other monsters you control cannot attack. Or during either player's battle phase, you, when a spell or trap is activated, you can negate the activation if you destroy, destroy that card. And then if you do that, this card will gain an additional 5,000, so this will bring it up to 4,000. But you can only activate the effects once per turn. And then we've got two copies of Red Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane. You can tribute one monster, then target a Red Dragon Archfiend monster in your graveyard, special summon it. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can special summon two tuners 
with the same level from your deck and your graveyard. One from your deck and one from your graveyard in defense position. Meaning you can, this will allow you to go into red supernova, or I mean red nova, and then go into red supernova dragon. Because you're special summoning from the deck and from the graveyard the uh, tuna monsters for it. And then we've got one copy of red, hot red dragon archfiend abyss. Quick effect, you can target a face-up card your opponent controls and negate its effects until the end of this turn. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target a Tuner Monster in your, your graveyard, special summon it in defense position. This will allow you to get your Tuner Monsters back from the graveyard. This is what makes this deck very, very powerful because of that. It makes it very powerful because of being able to special summon Tuners constantly from the graveyard. You're constantly getting that fuel and getting those Tuners to be able to keep Synchro climbing and everything. And it doesn't honestly never slows the deck down at all. And then three copies of Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. I wouldn't play the original Red Dragon Archfiend in this deck because its effect honestly is not that good. I would play the three copies of this guy. This card names become because his name becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while it is in the field or in the graveyard. Once per turn, you can destroy as many special summon effect monsters on the field as possible and attack less than or equal to this card, which he has 3k attack, so he's gonna be destroying pretty much everything. And then when it inflicts 500 points of direct damage to your opponent for each monster that was destroyed. So essentially, since this is a quick effect, you can destroy as many special summon effect monsters. So wait until your opponent has a bunch of special summon monsters and just completely annihilate it. And then they do burn damage based off of how many effect monsters were destroyed. Okay, and then we've got one copy of Draco Berserker of the Tenyi. Do I know I say this in a lot of my other videos. Do not run the Boral of Savage in this deck. This deck does not have Link Monsters. This deck's main focus and extra deck is going to be, or uh, side deck or extra deck is going to be Synchro Monsters. That's why everything in this uh, extra deck is Synchro because this is what makes the deck so good. Um, you, if you by taking out a lot of the Synchro Monsters, you're going to essentially going to be lowering your chances of getting what you want and everything. And then since this deck is all about Synchro climbing, I would highly suggest keeping that keeping the extra deck to that guys keep that to synchro monsters this is going to be your omni negate uh it's very easy because it's a level eight to bring out and this is what's going to allow you to banish the card uh when you negate it and then lastly for the synchro for the extra deck we've got three copies of red rising dragon this is going to be your starter dragon this is what's going to be able to go into your plays and being able to climb when this card is synchro summoned, you can target a resonator monster from your graveyard and special summon it. See, so this will allow you to go into a level 8, then a level 10, then a level 12. You cannot special summon from your extra deck this turn except Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters. During your main phase, except the turn when this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target two level resonator monsters in your graveyard and special summon them. So he'll revive those resonator monsters for you the next turn to be able to go higher. And it's not it's not impossible it's very easy to be able to have multiple red dragon synchro monsters on the field and just over overpower your opponent which is one of the things i love about this deck um that's going to be it for the deck profile like i said this is just a very fun just very powerful drag red dragon archfiend deck i love being able to play against it and it just has so many cool things that you can do with it and it's just it's I feel like there should be more support for it, honestly. And another thing that me and, and my wife have actually both complained on was that we both feel that some of these cards in here could deal, could, you know, value from having increased rarity. Like a lot of these cards, like Resonator Command or Resonant Destruction, don't have. And a lot of those actually tuner monsters, because some of the tuner monsters are gore gorgeous, would be really nice looking as like Ultra Rares or even Prismatic Rares or even rarities like this. And this deck is just a lot of fun to play against and everything. I love being able to see these Resonators keep coming back and just being able to just destroy all your opponent's stuff to be able to go in for direct attacks and just being able to just overwhelm everybody. All right, so that's going to be it for this deck profile. Also, I just want to say thank you to my new subscribers. You guys rock. Thank you for always watching my content and everything and just, you know, commenting and just enjoying the videos that I have and everything going up. And so... At the end of the Halloween, I'm just going to do a few deck profiles leading up into Christmas, like I've said before. And then Christmas, around Christmas time in December, we're going to have a lot of really good openings. So I really hope you stick around for that. Also, the Cyber Dragon, uh, the uh, Cyber Dark Structure deck will be starting in November. I'm just waiting on it because I already pre-ordered it. So it's going to be here after the 15th of this month. And then I'm going to wait until the beginning of next month to actually showcase it off. All right. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Later.